Tanya Streeter set out on a mission on August 17, 2002 that went against the laws of physics and human endurance. She took a strong metal sled, pulled a pivotal pin, and started her descent into the mysterious depths of the ocean, which was the deepest a person had ever gone. Just 35 seconds into her brave dive, she had already gone 166 feet below the surface, which is a very deep level. Think about how much pressure there is. It's three times what we have here on land. A lot of people think this is as deep as a person can go, but Tanya was set on showing them they were wrong. Tanya wasn't just lucky. She was very successful because she knew a lot about how the body can deal with tough situations. There was a lot of pressure underwater, so her body did an amazing thing to deal with it. It slowly filled her lungs with a special liquid called plasma. This helped her handle the tough conditions. Tanya had also trained for years for this dive. Deep sea exploring is a lot like being an athlete. But as Tanya kept going down into the ocean, something scary and out of the ordinary happened. She dove for 114 seconds and got to a depth of 360 feet. At this very important moment, something very scary happened on the surface. She took an extra breath right before she dived, which made her lungs too big and put too much stress on her heart. She didn't know it, but she only had 80% of the air she needed to properly adjust to being at such a deep depth. Things were getting scary and time was running out. The two-minute descent was very hard on Tanya's heart, but she reached her final goal, a depth of 525 feet. At this point, at the end of the cable, she had to take a number of important steps that would determine the outcome of her big dive. She had to do three things to get back to the surface. First, grab the lift bag. Second, open the valve to let air into the lift bag. Finally, pull the pin to let the lift bag rise to the surface. There was a lot of stress in the air as she carefully did each step. She struggled with the lift bag, opened the valve with skill, and got ready to let go of it to push it to the surface. But just as she thought she had won, nitrogen narcosis stepped in and stopped her. Tanya fumbled with the sled for 17 heart-stopping seconds. Her thoughts went back and forth between her desperate battle and the fear of her friends and family mourning her possible death. But by some lucky chance, she remembered to pull the pin and started her heart-racing climb to the surface. Tanya Streeter not only won, but she also made diving history by setting a new world record for no-limit diving. She broke Audrey Mestre's record of 427 feet, which had been held since 2001. At the very moment you thought people couldn't be more determined, a few months later, Audrey Mestre would try to break that record in a dive that would end in a terrible tragedy. Audrey was born in Paris on August 11, 1974. She has loved the ocean since she was a child. In a 25-meter swim race when she was two years old, she got a gold medal. When she was 13, she went scuba diving for the first time. But at age 14, symptoms from typhoid fever changed her life in a way she did not expect. She developed scoliosis in her back. For several years, she had to wear a tight plastic corset to help with this problem. She felt truly free from this heavy thing only when she took it off to go swimming. Because of this, she spent more and more time in the water as she got older because it made her feel good. Audrey liked to play in the ocean, and when her family moved to Mexico, Audrey followed her love of the ocean to La Paz, where she got a degree in marine biology. Back in 1996, Audrey was studying in La Paz when Pipin planned a free diving trip in the nearby waters of Cabo San Lucas. This gave Audrey the chance to talk to him for her research paper. As Audrey and Pipin spent more time together, they found amazing similarities in their lives that drew them closer together. Their love grew quickly. Audrey and Pipin became each other's main sources of motivation, both in their love story and in their attempt for diving records. When they got married in 1999, they quickly started breaking free diving records together. If you like to free dive, the Ida has very strict safety rules. Pippin, on the other hand, thought these rules were too strict and chose to do things on his own. The International Association of Free Divers is the name of the group he set up to regulate free divers. Pippin tried very hard in 2000 to dive to a depth of 535 feet, but he passed out during the rise, which meant that his record-breaking dive was not valid. Not giving up, Pippin turned his attention to Audrey and pushed her to go deeper. Audrey went as far as she could, and even though she had a blackout when she came up to the surface, she set a new world record by diving 410 feet off the coast of Fort Lauderdale. The eight feet during a practice dive on October 9, 2002. 
At this point, they thought Audrey could dive to 561 feet without taking a breath of air and break the No Limits Free Diving world record. Audrey cut herself off from everyone on the day of the record attempt. No one should be near the dive gear, she said. Because Pippin was scared, no one could check the tank for the return bag. At least three different people should check this three times before any dive. Some safety divers couldn't make it, which left a big hole in the support team, especially at very deep depths. There were just two deep divers available. For some background, there were 16 dives during Tanya Streeter's world record dive. Two safety divers were available for Audrey. One was at a depth of 262 feet, and the other was at a depth of 564 feet. There should have been at least one more diver at 427 feet to ensure safety and coordination between the divers. Without this support, the diver below couldn't reach the diver above without getting very dangerous decompression sickness. It's important to remember, though, that this dive took place under the IAFD, which Pippin made to get around the IDA safety rules. Even though there were clear risks, Pippin gave permission for Audrey to dive, and she started her descent. She took a deep breath and grabbed a weighted sled that was attached to a cable. The sled would carry her down to her goal depth of 561 feet, which is about the length of two football fields or the height of the Washington Monument. She was supposed to get to that depth in three minutes and then blow up a balloon to help her get back to the surface. During the dive, the crew was feeling uneasy, even though things looked like they were going well at first. The second diver, Pascal Burnaby, who was at 564 feet, knew something wasn't right. It was clear to Burnaby that the dive wire wasn't working right as the sled moved along it. 82 seconds into the dive, Audrey hit the end of the cable. She was 561 feet below the surface. In this case, she had to take those three important steps. She tried these important steps, but they didn't work out the way she thought they would. To make things even worse, Burnaby, the deep diver, swam over to Audrey and inflated the lift bag like an undersea balloon to try to help her get to the surface. But the bag didn't rise fast enough because it wasn't inflated enough, so he couldn't go with her to the top. It was clear that Audrey wouldn't make it to the top in time for a safe recovery because she was going up too slowly. At this point, the fact that there was no diver at 427 feet became a very serious problem. This kind of diver could have given very important help. There was no one at that level, unfortunately, to help Audrey when she needed it. Minutes went by, and the second diver at 262 feet still hadn't seen Audrey on the surface. The sound of Pippin's cries for diving gear filled the room. The world held its breath as the minutes ticked by. After another minute of feeling very rushed, Pippin finally put on his gear and went into the water. At four minutes, Burnaby found Audrey at a depth of 394 feet where she had wandered off and passed out. He grabbed her and launched himself as quickly as he could, putting his own life at risk. He brought her up to a depth of 295 feet. The lift bag came to the surface without Audrey at four minutes and 40 seconds. On the surface, everyone knew at this point that something very bad had happened. Pippin dove down to get Audrey and met Burnaby at 295 feet. They both ascended quickie. Pippin took this daring dive to 295 feet on just air, and his ascent rate was as fast as he could possibly manage. Pippin knew that this plan to save Audrey might end in his death, but he was still determined to be there. When Pippin got to the top, he started CPR right away while still in the water. As soon as they got Audrey onto the boat, they called for a doctor right away. But the doctor who got there was not equipped these conditions. He wasn't able to do much to help because he was a dentist. She still had a beat at this point. Audrey was rushed to the shore to be checked out, but sadly, she was declared dead. She passed away when she was 28 years old. After Audrey Mestre's death, an IAFD record was given to her for a practice dive she did on October 9th. Her husband had set the previous No Limits Dive World Record of 531.5 feet in January 2000. With that dive, she beat it. Audrey Mester was added to the Women Divers Hall of Fame after her death in 2002. The most depth Pippin ever sank was 561 feet in 2003. At that time, he wouldn't go any deeper because he wanted to hold the record for the deepest dive made by Audrey in her honor. Tanya Streeter's record has not been broken by a woman in more than 10 years. Aubrey Master may have been the only person who could have done it, but she is no longer alive. Would she have tried to go deeper if she had lived?